Golden State Warriors have to make a choice. When you think of the Golden State Warriors, you think of pure dominance, running the league and having a hand on every team's neck. Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors did not arrive in the NBA in 2015, but this is when their popularity really skyrocketed and they became one of the top, if not the top, powerhouse in the whole NBA. No one had seen anything like this before, a three-point shooting team led by a three-point shooting point guard really revolutionized the game and we saw this team win a championship and actually succeed with having the three being the main source of offense for them, something new in the NBA. From 2015 to 2016, the Golden State Warriors went one for two in the NBA Finals and we saw Chef Curry achieve superstar status, winning back-to-back -back MVPs with one of those years being a 50, 40, 90, 30 point per game season. While he hit over 400 threes, setting an NBA record, and who else to do this besides the greatest shooter to ever do it? Although winning a championship and going 73 and 9 is great, it was not good enough for the Warriors as they went on to sign Kevin Durant. Apparently, three All Stars were not enough, they had to add another superstar MVP level player to the mix, which really added them to that untouchable level. The most talented team of all time, the Warriors won two championships in three years, and I think it's safe to say that they wanted one another. If KD and Clay don't get injured in the 2019 finals, but there's nothing you could do about that. Toronto won that fair and square. All credit to them. But this takes us to today. KD is gone, Iggy is gone. Steph played five games, and Clay missed the whole season rehabbing his torn ACL. So the Warriors took a year off, earning the worst record in the whole NBA, going 15 and 50 and landing the second pick in the NBA draft. This is where the Golden State Warriors have to really ask themselves a question for their future. What is the goal going forward? Do they want to compete for as many championships as they can until Steph is just too old to lead a team to the championship? Or do they want to start planning for a team without Steph, without Clay, without Draymond Green? Because all, all those guys are in the back end of their prime, still great right now, but they only have so many years left. The answer to this question is completely centered around their second pick in this upcoming draft. If their focus is now, and that's really it, then trading the pick for either another all-star caliber player or more depth would be the best option if they're trying to win as many championships as they can right now. But on the other hand, if they're looking at guys like Anthony Edwards, Lamella Ball, or James Wiseman and saying, we could turn one of these guys into our next Steph Curry, our next championship, or our next franchise cornerstone, then keeping the pick is the best option. Drafting one of those guys at the top of the draft and having them contribute to your championship team right now while also taking the necessary steps to really take over as the best player one day, that would be the goal for, for drafting someone right now. And once Steph, Clay, and Draymond are really done with their careers, having a guy like Lamella Ball, Anthony Edwards, or James Wiseman would be a great choice for the Warriors to make. So basically the question they should have for themselves is, do we want to contend even more now or save some sauce for the future? And that's a great predicament to be in. These are the types of problems problems you create when you have a competent franchise like they do in Golden State. But what do you think the Warriors should do with their second pick in this upcoming draft? But either way, they are going to be good. Even if they keep the pick, they're still going to be great contenders next year. If they trade it for more depth or another all-star caliber player, they'll be even better. They can't really go wrong with this, but what is the better option? How do the Golden State Warriors match with other teams around the league? More specifically, the Los Angeles Lakers. After the 2020 postseason run, the LA Lakers are the team to beat in the NBA. The duo of LeBron James and Anthony Davis was simply too much for any other NBA team. The people entertained the idea of the Blazers, Rockets, Nuggets, or Heat upsetting the Lakers, but at the end of the day, the Lakers took care of all those teams pretty easily and crowned themselves the 2020 NBA champions. Other than the Lakers, I'm not worried about any other team beating the Golden State Warriors in the Western Conference or really in the whole NBA. The Clippers haven't earned the right to be viewed as a team to beat. With their disappointing postseason, they still have to prove themselves as even a championship contender. I have no doubt in my mind that the Warriors would beat the Rockets, and unless Jamal Murray plays like he played this postseason again, I don't see the Nuggets beating Golden State either. And teams like the Blazers and the Jazz aren't a real concern against Golden State, at least not in my eyes. I believe Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green are still a great enough championship core to take care of any team. It won't be so easy with the Lakers, but of course it's still very much possible. Another, other than the main core in, in Golden State, I think Andrew Wiggins will play a big role for Golden State next year. 
to say the least, Wiggins' time in Minnesota was disappointing with him being a number one pick. But I think he will take new strides in Golden State. Not really because of him, but because of the Warriors. He will be their secondary ball handler, and I believe Golden State will maximize his talent. I think he becomes a much more willing and active defender because of the Warriors won't allow him to be below average defensively the way Minnesota did. Maybe he won't be that 25, 25 plus point per game score he was expected to be throughout his career, but I believe he can play a very pivotal role on a contender. Draymond will get on Wiggins if he's slacking and the Warriors will allow that the way the Warriors did not with Jimmy Butler. So overall, the Warriors will be back to being contenders next season. Now the question is, how comfortable are they with their current roster? Of course, they'll be active in free agency, looking to improve their squad like every other team, but they have a chance to make improvements other teams don't. And this takes the conversation back to the second pick. As contenders, do they need their second pick in this year's draft? Or should they look to add another all-star or maybe even better by trading the pick along with some other players to get something even greater and be even better championship contenders? Or can Anthony Edwards, Lamella Ball, or James Wiseman, or any other rookie really play a pivotal role in their championship? And should they keep that pick to draft one of those guys while also develop, developing them to become one of Golden State's best player, if not their best player in the future? I'm interested to see what the Warriors do with this pick, and they have a unique chance as a contender to get even better. The Golden State Warriors have an interesting choice to make with the second pick. In my opinion, the best option is to trade that pick and go all in on championships for the next few years. Pairing that pick with some other players can give you a whole lot and an even better chance to beat the Los Angeles Lakers. What do you think they should do with that second pick? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Rashad with Hoops Times 2. Subscribe if you want more NBA content like this. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Peace out.